Okay, if you are in charge of building the top and bottom view, the first thing we're going to want to do is start with your bottom view first. And with the bottom view, what we're going to do is do the outside frame first. The outside frame would basically be the rectangle shape you see on this design. Now, if we look at the design itself, the majority of our cuts are small little cuts in here between the diagonals, the horizontals, and the verticals. So we're going to start by making your top and bottom pieces on your design. That's these two long ones here. That should be either 12 or 12 and a half inches according to grade level. Cut and pin these first. These are the two longest sticks and they require the most pinning. Now with the pins, you'll see we have a set of pins on this end, a set of pins on this end, and a set of pins in the middle. The reason why we want to put a set of pins in the middle is to keep this stick from moving too much as you're cutting and gluing the inside pieces here. Now the pinning process is called cross pinning. Cross pinning, if you look real close at this set of pins right here, you will notice that the pins actually cross over the top of the piece of wood. By crossing, you have one pin coming, going away from you, one pin coming toward you, forming like the shape of a letter X, and that holds the piece of wood in place. The tighter the cross pinning is, the more sturdy your design will be, and the less likely you are to make mistakes when you're actually doing the remaining cuts, okay? So now, as we take a look at the design, we have the top and bottom pieces pinned in place. The next type of line we want to do are vertical lines. So the vertical lines would consist of these orange lines right here. All of these vertical lines, notice there are six total, three on each side of our opening. And all six of those lines should be the same length. And so what we want, what we want to do is make a guide piece and cut all six lines before we do any pinning or any gluing. So to make a guide piece, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by taking just a piece of your balsa wood. I want you to go to one end of, their, of your design doesn't matter which end you want to start with, place the piece of balsa wood in between the two sticks. That would be this stick and this stick. While it's resting on one end right here, lay it right on top of your marker line and draw a line that is parallel to this edge right here. Notice how it's parallel when I make that mark. And what I want to do is cut that first piece and take the back of your scissors, open the scissors up as wide as your hand will reach, and with the back of the scissors, make sure the top of your blade lines up with the marker line you made and cut straight down toward the table, okay? That cutting motion tries to keep your angle straight up and down at 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is take that piece and set it in place and make sure it still fits. Now if you'll notice, if you watch again, I had to force this piece out just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go back to my marker line and cut just a little bit closer on that marker line but without cutting too close, because if I continue to cut too close, this piece will end up being too small. And I cut just a little bit off, and now I'm going to set it in place, and that's my first fit. I want my other five orange sticks to be the same length. So what I will do is start with this piece here, and I put a letter X on top of it. That will be my guide piece. This guide piece will guide me to cutting the remaining five sticks the same length. Now to do this part, I do not need to use any, do any more marking. I'm going to take my guide piece with the letter X on top, and I'm going to lay it right on top of the piece of wood I just cut from. With the X resting on top, I want to line up the ends as close as possible as I can. And then take my blade again, place, place the blade right on the end here, and cut straight down. By making that cut right there, I want to make sure that my ends are the same length, as you can see. So now I hang on to the guide piece, set this stick in place, make sure that it fits, and then continue cutting the remaining pieces. So I have four more to cut. So as I continue cutting, I'm going to set this on top again. Blade of the scissors right even with the edge, cut straight down. Continue cutting until you have them all cut at once. And now you may notice something a little different here with the pieces not fitting. So I'll show you how to correct that in just a moment. I'm still going to use my guide piece, make sure my ends line up, and continue cutting all the way across. Now, I will have two more cuts to make. And some of you might be thinking, well, those aren't very 
those aren't meeting very well in the middle. I'll show you why in just a moment. I continue cutting. Once I've made that cut, I have one more cut to make. The only problem is now that with the remaining piece that I have is too short. So that's where my scrap bag comes in place. I'll place that inside my scrap bag and leave that for later. Take another one of your sticks and make one final cut. So when I made my final cut, I have all six sticks cut out at the same time. Now, what I need to do is go back and check the pinning. So what I have to do is take my guide piece. It still fits in place right here. The reason why these sticks may not look like they fit very well is because when I cross pin this down, I may have had this piece arching in a little bit. So at this point, what I'm going to do is remove the cross pins in the middle on both ends. And we're going to go back and make sure these pieces are all the same. Because if we cut them the same with our guide piece, then this should form a nice square and without anything bowing out or bowing inward. Okay. Once we have these pieces glued in place, then we can go back and repin the center pieces. So now we take the glue. When you open up the glue, just add enough glue about the size of a diameter of a dime maybe. Okay, this is wood glue. It, it dries really fast. Close the lid on the glue bottle. Now start on one end, take your piece out, dip both ends in the glue, be generous with your glue, and slide it back in place. Before the glue sets, you want to make sure that your, your stick that you just cut and glued lines up with the line that was drawn on there previously. Continue doing so all the way across, so I'm going to glue all these in place at the same time. The advantage of cutting these at the same time rather than doing one piece at a time is you may end up with separate lengths because of your marking. Your pin marking may not be the same for every single line. This way this process I just showed you makes the process go a lot faster plus it's a little bit more accurate than making six different marks. Okay. Now we have those in place. I'm going to glue the last two pieces and then we'll talk about pinning. Now, so far we've pinned the top and bottom stick. And that was the two long pieces. Now the remaining pinning, all we have to left to do would be the, the two end pieces here and that's it. No pinnings required or necessary to do your inside pieces. Now with all my lines lined up, I want to go back and now repin the center portion right here and put a set of pins at the other end like we had originally. And here's where you just want to make sure that everything lines up as neat as possible. Now the only remaining pins we need to add would be to the two end pieces because that's part of our framework. So we're going to put a set of pins on this end right here. Notice we're crossed over. And we're going to put a set of pins on the opposite end over here. And notice they're crossed over. Now with your cross pinning, be sure that you do not pin anywhere where you have lines connecting because that's where we're going to be gluing joints together and adding glue. We want to keep the pins and the open spaces away from where we're gluing. Now we have our frame completed and we have our vertical lines finished. The next type of line we're going to do are horizontals and then finally diagonals. You'll notice with the diagonals